So Jesus says to me, he says, Justin, watch. And I says to Jesus, I am watching. I'm watching The Mandalorian on Friday nights on Disney Plus. I'm watching new shows on HBO Max that are coming out. I'm thinking of getting into The Queen's Gambit on Netflix. And on top of that, there's a bunch of YouTube channels that I'm already watching. And then Jesus says to me, Justin, that's not the kind of watching that I'm talking about. I'm like, okay. Well, I think I know what the kind of watching is that you're talking about. But I'm tired of that kind of watching. I'm tired of being vigilant. I'm tired, Lord. I'm sick and tired of going to every single time I'm with somebody, a little voice in the back of my head saying, somebody might get sick here. I'm sick and tired of this vigilance. It's exhausting. It's exhausting to, to question, to double think every single time there's an action out in public that it could be in danger, that we could be in danger. This vigilance, this watchfulness that Jesus seems to be telling me and all of us, his disciples, it's exhausting. I feel like we've been watching, we've been being vigilant for nine months now. And the news says it's even worse now than before. Maybe I'm not the only one sick of being watching, of being watchful. Maybe I'm not the only one sick of the uncertainty and how it gnaws at me, how the uncertainty leads me to anxiety or to apathy. Not just once, but I can count specifically twice when somebody has told me, everyone's just gonna get sick. This kind of apathy or denial or this fatalism that arises out of this exhaustion and tiredness. And so I watch. I watch on Netflix, I watch on YouTube, I watch on Hulu, I watch on any number of things because I would rather watch than wait. Because I'm sick of waiting too. And to quote Bob Marley, I would rather sing him, but you know, to be safe and everything like that. Just to quote Bob Marley, I don't want to wait in vain. I don't want to wait in vain for your love, Lord. I don't want to wait in vain. And it seems the cruel irony that now in Advent, we are told to wait, to wait for the coming of the Lord. Even more, Lord, more waiting. Lord Jesus, we started this, we started Lent in pandemic. And now it's a new liturgical year, it's Advent, we're back to purple, and we're still being asked to wait? Maybe it's not the kind of waiting that I'm used to because the waiting that I'm used to is very uncomfortable. It's the toe tapping, thumb twiddling waiting. It's the waiting that forces me to think of the future so I don't have to think of the present. It's the waiting that whenever is in the present, all I can do is fear or dread. I don't think that's Advent waiting. I don't think that's the kind of waiting that Jesus is asking me to do, is asking us to do. When I think of waiting, watchfulness, and vigilance, I have a couple images in mind. One is that of the mother. And I'm so happy that there are so many mothers here who have taught me what it means to watch, to be vigilant, and to wait. It is not without coincidence, I think, that during Lent, nine months ago, when we were just starting Shelter at Home, we celebrated the Annunciation. That was when Gabriel said to Mary, you will be conceive with a child. You will conceive with Jesus. And for nine months, we have been waiting with Mary for the revelation of Jesus Christ that we are going to celebrate on Christmas. I think of my friends who have born children and who are pregnant right now. The anxiety that comes with waiting for a child to be born. Who is this child going to be? What is this new reality? What is this new life going to be like? There is a space for grief in there. Our life is not going to be the same. We are losing some things, even though we're gaining others. Maybe this is a kind of Advent waiting that we're being called to. Like what Isaiah says, 
Come rip the heavens open, God, and come down and show yourself. There's a grief there. And the mother waits for this new reality to give birth, even if the old realities are passing away. Father Brendan this morning is celebrating Mass at a juvenile hall, and that reminded me too that there's another image of waiting that I think fits appropriately with this Advent in a time of pandemic. It's the waiting that the inmates taught me. The inmates in the prison in the Philippines who never know when the time will really come. They have a sentence, but because of the way things work in the system, they never know exactly when they're going out. And the anxiety, the uncertainty, the gnawing feeling that something is not right and something, and the fear that something might never go back to normal, that gnaws on them and it might drive them to anxiety, it might drive them to more violence, it might drive them to despair. But one day, I was walking out of the prison and on the way out, I was passing by the place that was meant for um, youth offenders who are now adults and serving time in an adult prison. And I looked up on that side, and it's a school. It's a school uh, formation place for still young men. And I saw a couple inmates sitting on the roof, kind of like it would be, they would be sitting on top of, of the Salon Parroquial right there on the side, just, just about that height. Just two guys just sitting there, cross-legged, kind of swaying like this. And I said, what are you guys doing up there? I was, I was also afraid that the guards might come down and punish them, throw them into, the, into solitary for doing something so ridiculous. But I said, what are you, what are you doing up there? And they said, we're just, we're just staring out into freedom. Because there are walls all around the prison. Walls that prevent the people inside from seeing just a hundred feet outside of where they're staying. A hundred feet to freedom. And they can't see it. So these men, they crawled up onto the rooftop and they just stared out. Here is freedom. And they said it with a smile. That's vigilance. That's the watchfulness. That's the kind of waiting that I feel called to this Advent. The waiting, even though all that surrounds might be terrible, the news might seem to get worse, the freedom's just beyond the horizon. If I can crawl up and I could see it. There's a kind of waiting there, not in despair, not in absence, but a absence from the present, but a waiting that is starkly aware of the present and is still hoping for the revelation of Christ in the future. And that's what St. Paul says in the second reading. He says, you've been given everything, you've been enriched and you've been given everything to wait for the revelation of Jesus Christ. Have I? Have you? Do you have what it takes to wait? Do you have what it takes to watch? Do you have the connections you need to stay strong? Do you have the prayer and the silence it takes to be present? It takes practice. And so with the psalmist, I say, Lord, make me turn to you. It's, I'm tired, so you better make me turn to you. And what are we going to wait for? Because that might give me some pep in my step. I don't want to wait in vain. I want to be like Bob Marley who says the waiting feel is fine. But then I need to know what I'm waiting for. Am I waiting? I've, for most of the pandemic, honestly, I was just waiting for things to get back to normal. I was just waiting so I can go to, you know, get my tacos with my friends, get to know every single person in the community over some really good Mexican food, go out for a drink with uh, old friends, because I'm from here in Los Angeles, to catch up in old times. I was waiting for things to get back to normal, for, you, for me to even just see full faces instead of looking out and seeing a bunch of ninjas looking back at me with half of your faces covered. And hopefully not like ninjas, you're not waiting, you know, to sneak up and, and hurt me. <laughs> it's sad. I, I, miss, I, miss, uh, I miss seeing smiles. I miss embraces. I miss kisses. I miss all these things. And Advent waiting is okay with the grief to look forward into the future. But what, am I wait what kind of future am I waiting for? I'm not waiting anymore for things to go back to normal. Because normal wasn't working for folks. 
If normal was working for folks, we wouldn't have had the pandemic, we wouldn't have had the protests if normal wasn't working for folks. I'm not waiting for things to get back to normal. I'm not waiting for things to get back to business as usual. Business as usual wasn't working for the factory workers and the farm workers who were crowded in as essential workers and at more risk of being sick. I'm not waiting for business as usual. This pandemic has taught me and has taught many people that what we're waiting for is not the same as what it was before. Because if it was, then I'm likely to fall asleep like the people in the parable that Jesus was talking about. And Jesus doesn't say fall asleep, get accustomed, get adjusted, get back to normal. Jesus says something bigger and something new is coming. Watch out for it. And have you seen it? Have you seen the seeds of this new thing that's coming? Just this morning I saw a little bit of it. Daniel, this young man here, went up to read. Here's a seed of something new. Youth who are continuing to come here in a time of pandemic to spend their time in church and to offer themselves and their services to our community. I've seen mutual aid networks formed. People just making food for each other and dropping them, dropping them off at their houses. I haven't seen that before. It's okay, it has happened before, but I haven't seen it before. I've seen people connecting over great distances just to be with each other on Zoom. I've seen the generosity continue to overflow even when people are going to grocery stores and hoarding. Isaiah says, God, do something. Rip open the heavens and come down. But the truth of the matter is, God has already ripped down the heavens and is coming down. It's coming down even now on our altar. Eucharist is God ripping down the heavens and coming down and making us the revelation of Jesus Christ to the nations. We are that something new that's happening if we are watching for it. I'm waiting for the time and I'm watching for the time when Christ makes us the, emo the people of solidarity over isolation where Christ makes us the people of, of, of connection over isolation, of solidarity over polarization, of generosity over greed and hoarding, of vulnerability over domination. Come, Jesus. I don't want to wait in vain. But with these people, with you, the waiting feel is fine.